Good morning, Ron. This is Rob Perlman with CollectSpace.com. Hey, Rob. Good to hear your voice. Uh, good to see you on, on TV here. <laughs> um, welcome back. Um, and, and on that subject, how is uh, adjusting to life back on Earth? Have you gotten your Earth legs back? You know, I have, and it, it was really kind of remarkable how I was really uh, pleasantly surprised at how fast uh, everything seemed normal again. And I, I remember after my shuttle mission, everything seemed weird for a while, but I think uh, my body realized uh, it had been here before and uh, been through this transition before, and it was, uh, it was really nice, actually. It's a great planet. I love, this is my favorite planet, so I love coming back to <laughs> Um, there's been some recent news coverage here about NASA studying um, a, a blurred eyesight um, after long duration missions. Have you experienced anything like that or um, or have any concerns about it? Well, I, I did have a, a little bit of degradation in, in uh, eyesight while I was on orbit. I, I haven't uh, been fully tested yet coming back, but just uh, my own feeling on it is that uh, I think I've, I've recovered and uh, I think I'm back to where I was before I launched. But, uh, I'll let the docs uh, be the judge of that, but I, I, it seems to be uh, back to normal. Okay. Um, with regards to your Soyuz landing, uh, at least for us on the ground, there was a little bit of, um, of, of tension as, as there wasn't an ability to hear from you and mm -hmm. the crew. Mm -hmm. um, what was your experience on board? Um, well, the first I had heard that there were some tense moments was, uh, you know, when we got on the ground and we were, you know, pulled from the capsule and we were, you know, talking about the, the reentry. So uh, what, what my understanding is is that that was not uh, completely unexpected based on the trajectory and, and, you know, how south our orbit was, you know, coming in uh, for landing. So, I, you know, I, I don't know exactly, you know, if there was any, you know, what the investigation shows, if there even is one. Uh, but our understanding was that this was all uh, perfectly normal and uh, expected. So it was a loss of audio both for us on the ground, but also you. You didn't hear the ground calling you. Um, not through the whole uh, reentry. There were there were periods where we did not hear the ground, um, uh, but uh, you know they didn't seem like very long periods of time where we, where we weren't hearing the ground. So um, you know there w there was not uh, you know a sense that there was a problem on, on board. Okay. Um, you had a, uh, about a week extension, uh, staying on board for longer than you expected. Mm -hmm. um, did that last-minute extension um, cause scheduling conflicts within your own preparation for coming home? I mean, not just physically, but in terms of setting yourself up uh, mentally for leaving the station and coming back to Earth? No, I, I think we uh, found out about it uh, far enough out, and, and, and our initial word was that we were going to extend two months. So when we when we uh, ex came when the final decision was made to extend a week, that was actually moving it uh, earlier than what we had already prepared ourselves for. So um, you know we were fully prepared to go through the end of October on board, um, and you know it's it's uh, the, you know there's there's things that you need to think about. You know obviously the, you, you know, there might be plans on the ground that you had, but uh, um, you know we understand we understood and, and continue to understand that the, you know we we have a little bit. Uh, of a challenge ahead of us uh, to, you know, because of the uh, the uh, booster failure that we had, uh, to make sure that uh, the program is is best suited and and you know best best prepared to to fully utilize uh, to continue fu fully utilizing um, the ISS. Uh, speaking of that failure of, of the loss of the progress, um, th there was a lot of talk here about how the supplies were somewhat. Um, not as critical because of STS-135 coming to the station and restocking the space station. But progress is usually bring up some personal items, too. Did you lose anything of yours on board that progress? Yeah, on, on, I think probably every progress, there's crew care packages that were on board. Uh, and so, the, you know, those were lost. Um, but, you know, that's, you know, that's really, you know, uh, the, you know, what we were more concerned about is the, those critical items, you know, equipment that was lost. And um, as you said, um, you know, from a supplies point of view, we're in really good shape um, because of the, uh, the logistical missions that we've, we've had up to date, including the, you know, 135. Mentioning 135 as the last space shuttle mission, um, what was it like watching, as someone who's flown on the space shuttle, as, as someone who's been in the NASA astronaut corps that has been centered around the space shuttle, what was it like watching uh, Atlantis pull away for the last time. Yeah, that was uh, that was bittersweet. Um, you know, from, it was emotional. I, I remember uh, as we were closing the hatch, um, 
Uh, Sandy Magnus was on the other side of the hatch and uh, just reached through the hatch and, and shook her hand as, uh, just as we were closing the hatch. And it, it dawned on me, or it actually hit me like a ton of bricks, that you know, that will never happen again. There will never be somebody reaching through the hatch to, to somebody on the shuttle and, and shaking their hand as they're, as they're leaving. So that, uh, you know, that was um, an emotional moment. But it really, you know, it sig signifies, a, you know, a new chapter in uh, not only our nation's space program but the international space program uh, in that you know the the end of this chapter of the of the space shuttle uh, you know will lead to this uh, new era of uh, space exploration which we hope will lead to um, exploration beyond low earth orbit human exploration beyond low earth orbit and you know this is a very critical um, and important step to, to take Turning uh, attention to some of the projects that you did through Fra Fragile Oasis and the NASA website and, and online media, um, you had some really unique uh, projects stuff that hadn't been done in orbit before, like take a, a sunrise or um, or the stop motion work that we saw the preview. Um, did you first of all did you get everything that you wanted to get done through that um, in the time you were on board? Oh, of course not. You never get you never get everything you want to get done. Uh, I, I I did get a lot done though. I really you know, um, and, and I think a lot of astronauts uh, or most astronauts uh, feel the same way is you know this responsibility to to basically share as best we can this experience. Um, you know we're very fortunate and very privileged to. To be able to to have this experience of seeing our Earth and, and living um, in space, and um, you know this this was a way that we could we could share that as best we could with the uh, with um, the people that are supporting us. Were you surprised at all by the reaction from from the ground from people watching? Did any um, reactions that you saw through Twitter or through email being relayed to you um, catch you off guard? No, but you know, I, I think it's a wonderful thing that we have. You know, the the, the world is really begin get, getting smaller and smaller, and uh, you know, this um, this new way to communicate uh, is, is, is I think a very effective way um, and a very timely way. And um, you know, one of my goals uh, with with using all the you know social media or you know websites or, or any other um, means is is to not just have people come along as spectators, but to have them come along as as fellow crew members, uh, crewmates, and so, you know, to really be a part of it. And I think we're just taking the first steps in that. And I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of potential and a lot of possibilities out there to, to really, you know, help uh, um, integrate more and more people in, into what we're doing in the space program. Talking about outreach, um, one of the educational outreach projects up there, I think I even asked you about it while you were in orbit, um, are these Legos that are aboard there? And I know one of the big projects was building a, an international space station. Was that completed while you were up there? Um, I don't know the answer to that. I, I um, was briefly involved with, uh, with the, the Lego building. And I think, uh, you know, it was uh, from what I did do, um, and Satoshi was doing a lot of that, is, um, you know, it's a great opportunity to... Uh, basically, talk about the, the space program. Talk about the uh, the space station, uh, and you, you know it's pretty neat to have this uh, little Lego uh, model of the airlock and be standing in the airlock, talking about you know how we go outside and, and how it all works, and uh, you know it's a way to engage you know m maybe a younger audience uh, and get them uh, excited about what we're doing in the space program. One minute, Robert. Um, while you were in space, uh, or, or as you were coming home, actually the. Um, NASA announced this new architecture for the space launch system, and there's been developments on the commercial front as well. Mm -hmm. um, how well were you able to keep up with those at all, and do you have an opinion on on the direction that um, U.S. space flight is taking? Well, I, I mean, the direction is you know to to explore beyond lo low Earth orbit, and I think that's the that is the right direction to go in. Uh, the steps that we need to take to to make that happen, you know, one of and we just talked about one of them was to retire the the uh, space shuttle and to really turn over you know activities in low Earth orbit to the commercial uh, enterprises, and uh, which frees up uh, NASA and frees up the other agencies to uh, to take that next step and to start uh, looking a little bit. Uh, farther from our, from our planet, which I think is the, is the right way to go. Well, thanks for your time this morning, and, uh, and see you on Earth. <laughs> All right. See you, Robert. <laughs> Bye. Good, good talking to you.